When you're ready to talk, you talk. Don't ever let nobody make you be quiet. I ain't named you Star by accident. All right, another movie about racism and the system of white supremacy in America. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for the hate you give. I really do appreciate it. Now, I'm a little bit late to this party. Sorry about that, but rather be late than never. And what the hate you give, if you didn't notice by the title already, each of the first letters of each word in their title spell out the word thug. I really do like the representation there. I really do like uh, what that title means. Basically, just what whatever black people do, whether we are acting as the perceived thugs, which is a stereotype, or we're a doctor and a lawyer and assimilate and do everything that we're supposed to do, you know, no matter what, they're going to see us as black first and treat us as such. And that's what this film delves into. Um, it delves into a lot of things that black Americans and the black community goes through. It's basically like a real life reenactment of what we go through when it comes to uh, b police brutality. It's kind of interesting that 20th Century Fox would make this film, but I will never forget that horrible film they made a number of years ago called uh, Exodus Gods and Kings, which is ridiculous, but you know, they're making this right here. Now, um, I can relate to a ton of things in this film. Um, of course, we're going to talk about it. Um, I, I'll just go ahead and say I liked it for the most part, but there are some things that kind of did rub me the wrong way. And of course, we're going to get into all that. Uh, when I looked up the director of this film, I was very surprised as George George Tillman Jr. and I'm really shocked that I really haven't been paying attention to him before or before I saw this movie because when I looked at his filmography I mean pretty much everything he's done is fantastic and I don't mean just like Oscar worthy he's you know just that great he can't be that great but you know he's did, done films like uh, Soul Food or of course we all seen that came out in 1997 Men of Honor with Cuba Gooden Jr. in 2000 Notorious in 2009 and that was a pretty good Notorious B.I.G. movie The Faster with The Rock and the inevitable defeat of Mr. Pete starring Jennifer Hudson I do remember when that movie came out um, but I didn't see it. So if you've seen that, let me know. The Longest Ride that really doesn't have to do with black people because all those previous films did. That was a good one too. And also he's directed like an episode or two of Power and Luke K. So, you know, this filmography or his filmography, excuse me, is pretty good. Um, the writer of this film, or it's, it's based off of a book by Angie Thomas, which I haven't seen. Uh, of course, some people are like, Ray, you need to see the book before you see the movie, but I always like to see a movie before I see the book. And the screenplay was was done by Audrey Wells. Now I'm not really familiar with her uh, with her work, uh, but I just I'm bringing it up because I noticed that she's a white woman writing a screenplay uh, for the Hate You Give that does not that deals with the black community and black Americans. You know, so I don't know if that was for a reason or they just wanted to choose the best person for the job. One of the things that um, I, I don't want to say that this is a gripe that I had about the film, but it's just something that I noticed is that kind of went hard in the paint with a few real life things, but they could have went harder when it comes to like racism in the system of white supremacy. But when I was looking up a cover photo to put on my thumbnail for this video, I noticed that they had a little, um, I guess, indicator on the poster or the marketing that says common sense with a uh, check mark, great for families. And I'm just like, was that buffer necessary? And I mean, it was, but this is something that I don't like about the society that we live in is that when it comes to racism, white supremacy and stuff that black Americans go through, there's a buffer that needs to be presented like a preface or something, a preface, excuse me. So, well, oh, okay, I know this deals with race, but you know, we're not going to hit you too hard. So it's like, okay, okay, I guess, I guess our family can go sit now. I mean, that's just the way I'm interpreting it, but you know, I could be uh, wrong in my assessment there. Um, but if you have an opinion of yours, you know, please let me know. Uh, but, you know, a first thing, there's a ton of things that I want to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about is the casting. And let's talk about the casting first with the main actress, Amanda, or Amanda Steinberg. Now, 
I'm a little on the fence with her casting. First of all, I will go ahead and say that I think that she did a fantastic job in the role. And I am a fan of hers uh, as far as uh, her acting is concerned. If you don't know her work, she's uh, she was in The Hunger Games that came out a number of years ago. Of course, you've all heard of that film uh, with Jennifer Lawrence. But yeah, she was Rue in that film. Uh, she was also voices in a uh, voice in um, the real two, and I, I didn't see real two, but she played Maddie in everything, everything, and that was a pretty good movie. Um, I did not see the Darkest Minds, but now that she's in, um, she's in this movie, The Hatred Give, and the reason why I say I'm on the fence is because she's biracial. I don't have nothing against biracials. I don't have nothing against mulattoes. You know what I'm saying? More power to you. You know what I'm saying? I love you. If you want to love me, we can all love each other and work together and all this. So I don't have a problem with minority. Not, well, not minorities. I don't know why I said that. I don't have a problem with biracials. But at the same time, when you take a biracial and you put them into a role that is specifically designed for a black American because nobody in the world knows what we know and can experience what we can experience. Now, yes, Amandalay in the general society, she will be seen as a black woman first, you know, no matter what. But at the same time, a biracial person is not black. You know, they are both, you know, so. Uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, casting like that, like uh, for, you know, uh, John Boyega made his ignorant comment, get him getting mad at Samuel Jackson. He made that comment. And then you have um, the Crystal Irzy. Irz I don't know. She was just in uh, the what that movie was. What, what I can't even talk. What is that movie? The Bad Times at the uh, uh, um, I can't talk. Bad Times at the El Royale Hotel. So you have this actress here, Cynthia Arrivo, who played Darling Sweet in that movie. I had to look it up. You know, she's being played, she's being cast as Harriet Tubman. I, I'm not really cool with that. I'm not mad at the actor or the actress. I'm mad at the studio for that. Um, uh, David Oyelowo, who played Martin Luther King in, in uh, Selma. You know, that was directed by Eva DuVernay. I'm not really mad at the actor, but I'm mad at the, uh, at the studio. I mean... They, even though they can do a great job in the role and Amanda Lee did here, so I don't want to take anything away from her. You know, I just feel like a black American just can identify with that more and really give that riveting performance that will get uh, awards during award season. And like I said, her her performance was great. Um, you know, so I don't want to take anything from her. But there is another African sister in this movie, that, which I'll talk about, that was not so great to me. The reason why I also say I'm on the fence is because the casting could have been the it was great, great casting as well, given the subject material. Very beginning of this film, and it's just one of the things that I love is the code switching that black people go through. That, you know, when we're around white people, you know, we act and talk a certain way, but then we're around ourselves, you know, we, we act black or we act ourselves and we, you know, we can let our hair down, you know, figuratively speaking, you know, and all that good stuff. And sometimes, even when you're in the middle, when you're on the line right there as a black man, I'm, I'm speaking for myself here, you still sometimes have a hard time identifying with either group. Uh, in a sense, I'm going to be personal right now. I'm black. I have a black mother and I have a black father. But majority of my life, I went to a private Christian school where it was predominantly white people. We only I only had like one black girl in my entire graduating senior class. From fifth grade to my senior year in high school, I was with predominantly white people. Second and third grade, predominantly white people too. The difference in worlds is just crazy. Um, it, it just is. And um, with you have Aman Amanda La Steinberg's character, she is biracial in real life. So not all biracial people, but a good chunk of them do have identity problems. Um, not blaming them, of course, but, you know, they get rejected from the white side. They get rejected from the black side at times. That's unfortunate, but that's just the reality of it. So if you cast her and you do have black people in real life that do go to like predominantly white schools, but then at home or when they go to church or karate practice or dance practice or whatever, they run a bunch of black people. So they have to switch it up. So given that she is really biracial, uh, you know, she can relate to, you know, not necessarily identifying fully with, you know, a uh, certain group of people. So I'm kind of on the fence with that. You know, I'm happy with the casting, but at the same time, you know, I'm not entirely in love with it. But, you know, she did do a, she did give a great job. Um, she is the uh, one of the actresses in this movie that had to go through the tragedy and watch her uh, friend get murdered. 
And, uh, you know, her name is Star Carter. Her name is Star S-T-R-R, two R's. And, you know, her father named her that just because um, he felt that, you know, she is a bright, shining star and needs to use her name as a weapon, as a voice. And I really do appreciate that. And that just kind of lets me know or reminds me of another great thing that I did like about this movie and the sense and dy dynamic of a family, how powerful that is, even though it is blended in, in this film. And there's necessarily nothing wrong. Well, I don't want to say necessarily. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you should always aim to have a complete family, but at the same time, no one can control the universe. Um, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, as long as there's love in that household or wherever, that's all that matters. And the love in this family was really strong here uh, in this film. And that is one of the most things that I really did like about it, because, uh, you know, if you have a strong black flam family, there's really they're pretty much unstoppable. You know, after Martin Luther King was assassinated by the U.S. government, unfortunately, which was proved in 1995, they went after our families and to break it up and try to, you know, take the father out of the home and feminize the man, you know, and I, that's why another reason I don't like black men in Hollywood dressing up as women and, eh, 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 and doing stupid shit like that, you know what I'm saying? There was none of that in this movie. Um, and, and you had a black father in this film by the name of Russell Hornsby, who played Maverick Mav Carter. And this film, not, not this film, this review may have like uh, some slight spoilers. Uh, one, because I'm a little late to the part, and two, is that's just how I want to do it. Um, you know, he was in the pen for a little bit, but he didn't make any excuses. He was still there for his family, uh, you know, when the time came, when it was necessary. I, I felt his pain and I felt his struggle of just not knowing what to do and the best way to handle a certain situation in the film, but just knowing that he had to do something. If you know, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, kind of towards the end where his son wanted to go with him. I mean, I was like, he, he can't just sit there. I mean, he, he, he's torn. It's like, golly, I don't know what to do, but I got to do something. Like, I, I feel him. I, I can I can relate to him there. You know, so, uh, you know, just a you know pretty good uh, cast so far. Um, you know, then we have Regina Hall. Great performance. She was the mother of Amanda Law. And just back to the casting of Amanda Law or Amanda Lay, it will just, at one point, you know, you have your black mom right here and then your black father, but then you have a biracial child that kind of just clocked me out of the moment right there. But, you know, at the same time, I already explained that. Now, uh, Anthony Mackie was in this as well. Uh, Common was in this film as a police officer. And he was just getting on my nerve because he was nigger explaining, basically just caping for the white people or, or for policemen. Now, I'm not hating on white people and I'm not hating on policemen because I don't hate white people. I don't hate policemen. I don't think all white people are bad. I don't think all uh, I don't think all police are bad. But the way he was nigger explaining in this movie is just like he's up uh, holding the system of white supremacy, which people do do in real life. So um, I, I do like that it was written into the film. Uh, but it's damn frustrating, uh, it is. And, you know, in this film right here, I feel like I'm kind of jumping around when I'm supposed to be talking about casting. You know, globally, and in this film, but globally in real life, you, there's only three classifications of people. Uh, white people, non-white people, and white supremacists. And I'm going to call out a few characters that kind of fit into that mold. I don't necessarily want to say Common's character was, uh, was uh, you know, in the white supremacist group as a black man, but he was close or whatever. You know, I, I heard him tap dancing a little bit. You know, he had them biscuits in his back pocket or whatever. But I mean, he did a great job, but it was just, uh, it, it, it was a great representation of just, you know, niggas explaining just like, well, this is what the cops think that, that he could have a gun or he could have drugs or that we, there could be in collusion. And I'm just like, man, get the F out of here. You know what I'm saying? It was also kind of just a little bit too on the nose, the explanations that he was given, you know, because, uh, it was just kind of breaking down like, okay, well, if you're treating a black man like white or like that, why aren't you treating a white suspect like that either? And, you know, of course, there was no logic or reason to it. So they are really hitting a lot of the nails on the head as far as the the uh, realism as far as like you know how it is in real life so you know i have to give them there give give it to them there now as far uh isa ray is in this film as well and i hurt my hand i think i'm bleeding uh but <laughs> i'm sorry isa ray is in this film as well now uh isa ray i forgot i i, I could have looked it up but she i think she's a african or she may be completely from the uh, senegalese or whatever but I just was not feeling her performance in this role, uh, in this film. I just really, you know, she was a social justice warrior. 
Uh, she was an attorney. Uh, she was fighting for black people, but I just wasn't feeling it. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of her work. I, I do watch the show, show Insecure. I'm a season behind. I have not even started season three yet. I may start that today. But I just wasn't feeling her performance. I, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, that just kind of goes to me saying, like, when you have roles like this, I just feel that they should be two for black Americans. Now, I don't want to see, please don't put any ignorant comment like, well, Chadwick Boseman is a, uh African-American and he was Black Panther. Well, that's fiction. That's not real. So we're talking about real life you know, uh, heroes in the black community and things like that. So I'm not going to sit here and just crap on Issa Rae. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I just wasn't really feeling her performance either. Um, but the gentleman, Algie Smith, that played Khalil, the gentleman that got, uh, that got shot by the cop in this film, you know, he did do a good job, even though he, it was short lived, unfortunately, and I'm not spoiling anything. Um, I, I did like his character. It was a little exaggerated how he was um, interacting with the cop. And things like that. It's it's kind of like, I while I did, and I mean, when I saw how they were portraying him in this film, I kind of had a sense of where I thought this film was gonna go. It didn't do that completely, but it did in the sense to where it's not trying to make the white people out to be the bad guy. You know what I'm saying? Now I understand that, but they and and to me with this film, and especially with Algie Smith, they tried to try to give like a little reason to where I police have a, a valid reason to execute black people when they don't it's bullshit now if you're going to be this aggressive with the black person okay that's fine but you need to be that aggressive with white people too when unarmed black men get shot down all the time because he had a brush he was just trying to brush his head you know but then you know you got people that go shoot up churches and synagogues and things like that and shoot people you know shoot people in kroger but those people can get apprehended uh, you know, non-violently and no one dead and things like that. You know, it's just pretty, uh, pretty, um, pretty frustrating. Um, the message in the film was, uh, pretty nice. Um, there's a ton of them. Some people are going to pick up some messages and some people aren't. The main message in this film to me is no matter what we do, no matter what we say, they're not going to hear us. Now you may not like me for saying that, but God dang, that's just the reality of the situation. I mean, there's not, I mean, we, we, like, you know, there's a lot of protesting in this movie. And then when that was going on, I was like, okay, how, how is this film going to end? If they end on some stupid kumbaya and then, the, and, the, and the black people, and the and the white people or the black people and the, and the cops hugging and kissing and just like, oh let's go have some coffee and get to know each other i would have rolled my eyes and possibly passed out now you can be like whoa b don't you want us all to live in peace and harmony well yes i do but that's just not gonna happen i mean we've been begging and pleading and screaming and hollering for literally 400 years if you really want to get literal literal next year would be the 400th year right now we're at like 399 and that's one of the things that I really did love about the film is that Amanda basically, you know, she just like it, at a point, it finally clicked in her. She woke up. I'm not saying that she was in the sunken place, but she just had a different sense of reality. Her consciousness went up to the next level. To like, damn, no matter like literally we could do everything they want us to do. We can abandon our business, our own businesses and give all of our money and resources to, the, to them to better their lives. And they're still going to treat us like crap. And, and it was no words. I like when the film does not show you, but they tell you. And it was just like a look on her face in the middle of this protest where it was just like, you know, she's like, damn, you know what I'm saying? I just really got to look out for my own people because it, it's just, there's no hope. Now, I, now I, I won't say it's no hope for everybody because there is a such thing as allies in this movie. And this film did kind of delve in that just a little bit. But earlier I was talking about different classifications of uh, people in this film and people in the world. We have white people, non-white people, and white supremacists. Of course, I'm a black man. I would be in the non-white people group. A white person, uh, if you saw the movie, uh, her boyfriend was named Chris. Now, uh, he fits into the white uh, group uh, of this where... And um, she had another friend by the name of, uh, what is her name? I think it's Sabrina Carpenter. Yep, she played Haley. She falls into the white supremacist group. Now, you could fall into that group of being racist or white supremacist or white supremacist or whatever and not know it. It's still no excuse. You need to look in the mirror and check yourself. And I'm just talking because this, this film hit on all these points. So I, just, I really just feel like I got to talk about it. But 
She was a racist to me. She was a white supremacist to me. Now, I don't think she realized it, but that doesn't effing matter. You know, like I said, you need to check yourself. Because she on that whole uh, All Lives Matter BS. And this film right here is making the cop that murdered the boy out to be the victim. And she's caping for the cop. Like, oh my God, this is so sad. I mean, he was just doing his job. I mean, his, he can't even go out and get milk. He'll get ridiculed. You know, his life matters too. And this is like, you, when you hear something about like that in real life, you're like, uh, 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 uh. You're like whoa, I, I cannot deal with you. you. We are just too far gone. And yeah, it may be kind of good to try to talk it out and get a better understanding because, you know, some people, I grew up knowing every different race. But some white people only grew up knowing white people. Some black people only grew up being around black people. And this was an example of this. And she's spitting that rhetoric of, of just ridiculousness of how, you know, the cop is the victim and it's not his fault. And, you know, it could have been this, it could have been that. And that's just ridiculous. And she did not want to listen. That, that, that's what makes it worse. She was just so hell bent on her point and her being right and just ready to exclude people instead of listening to somebody that's crying, that's in pain. You know, if you have, excuse me. I'm just getting passionate right now. If you have a rape victim, you feel sorry for the rape victim or you listen to what they have to say. You don't be like, well, let's look at it from the male's point of view. It, it, it has been a while since he got some ass. You know, he was horny. You know, I mean, you know, men are men. You know, when we get horny, we got, you know, uh, uh, uh. I mean, you know, you were wearing a short skirt and bending it over and dropping it like it's hot. No, that is insane. That is crazy. You know, but for some reason, that type of mindset and behavior is put upon us. And that's just, you know, another thing that I liked about the film. Now, going back to her boyfriend, Chris, that was a white guy. He thought he understood, but he didn't. And at one point he was, you know, I don't see color. I sh that, that, Stop it. When we hear stuff like that, we know you're lying. That's dumb. They're, everybody sees color. I see color. When I see somebody, the first, oh, that's a black person. That's a white person. That's a yellow person. That's a red person. People don't really go around saying that's a yellow person. That means Asian, but I think you get my point. That's a brown person. You know what I'm saying? They don't. Everybody sees color. What matters is the way you treat somebody. Now, just because I see that you white, brown, yellow, red, whatever, that don't mean that I'm going to treat you any different. I see that. But I'm not gonna. We're not gonna treat nobody different. So you know, he was one of those type of people or whatever, and there was kind of innocent or whatever. But he was trying, and he tried to beat her for his girl. So I do appreciate that. And that's just I was watching the film. I was like, oh man, white person, non-white person, white supremacist or whatever. So, uh, but of course the the um, the acting was great across the board. There was a lot of white fragility in this film as well. It had a lot of nods to uh, Tupac Shakur, so I, I give respect there. And this the way the pacing of the film and the directing of the film was just very, it was done very well. There was a number of uh, times where it was just a very intense, severe uh, moment. And it was, the camera just kind of slowed down and gave you um, a slow motion edit to where there's no sound and you're just in the environment, in the mix. But then also the soundtrack will come through just to intensify the moment. They did that about four or five times and it just really, you know, hit home is, you know, for me as just, you know, being really impactful in that moment. I really do. I talked about the family earlier. I really like all the relationships in this uh, in this film as well, um, especially with um, what is her name? Star and Khalil in this film. You know, they just didn't know each other. I mean, the film really did take a great did a great job. Of showing just how important their friendship was, how there could have been some romance there. Um, you know, the bond that they had when they were children and how they were friends of Harry Potter and the way the film kept going back to that just to really, you know, push the, uh, make the point of just how, you know, this really did hurt Amanda or, or her real name is a star in the film. Also, it kind of changed my perspective on things, too, about how I would handle racism and things like that. Because if I murder somebody, of course, I'm going to be on the front line at the witness stand. Of course, I don't I don't care. You know, I'm going a, I'm to a reveal what I saw. But, you know, this is a young girl in high school and she may not want that type of attention. And, you know, I kind of I really do understand that. So, um, you know, I, I like it all. Uh, I mean, there were some characters in this film that I just, you know, I did not like and I did not care for. But at the same time. You know, it was realistic. So, I mean, every every black person in real life does not do what I would like for them to do. But when I say that, please don't beat me up. I don't, I'm not saying that I have all the answers and that I'm some guru. No, no, no. I'm just mean as, as far as being passionate and serving your community. I could be doing more myself as well. So, I, 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 you know, I, I want to tailor my words just a little bit there. But 
at the same time, that's how it is in real life, and that's how it was in this movie. And you, you know, you had one black guy in the protest, and you know, he wanted to be peaceful. And then when they got a little rowdy and the cops, he claping for the cops. They're just doing their job. I'm like, that's bullshit, man. Get the hell out of here. What you're saying is they're just upholding the system of white supremacy. I mean, come on. That's all they're doing is upholding the system of white supremacy. I mean, that's basically what you're saying. So, And there are people like that in real life. The Jesse Lee Petersons and the the uh, Stephen A. Smiths and the, uh, what's that Clark, that dumbass cop's name? Uh, Sheriff Clark or whatever. Y'all know who I'm talking about. But, um yeah, so the casting was great. I like the cold switching between the two worlds. I really like the acting and the message. Uh, the niggas planning was real with white fragility. We had some coons in here. The family dynamic, protesting, Tupac security, editing. You know, it was a, it was a great film. I'm kind of struggling where I want to rate this thing. Um, but I do uh, have a figure. If I want to rate. The hate you give out of one out of ten, I would give it an eight point five out of ten. Yes, an eight point five out of ten. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen the hate you give or do you want to see it? I suggest you should. Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's uh, get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel and please subscribe to my channel, guys. Help me reach 10,000 subscribers. I do want to hit my next milestone and I can only do that with your help if you subscribe and share the video you can also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff it's right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash view slash rant really of the hate you give sorry if it was all over the place but before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace